Welcome to Unethical Podcast. My name is Kent and I'm here for a ripping good time. That's basically perfect. All right. So you say a sentence and let me copy you. Yeah. But I'm curious. Do I sound like an inbred Australian? A Tasmanian. Do I sound like an inbred Australian? Because right now I just sound inbred. But when I do it like that, does it sound like, yeah, that's Australian, but it's like backwoods, you know, cousin fucking Australian. You actually sound more like the normal Australians than than like when the other when the others make put on Australian accent. They sound like backwards. You sounded the most Australian. Oh wow! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. God. And the only the only other accent that I can do is because well, I was in Germany one time at a gift shop, and I remember I may have told this story before. German <laughs> gift shops they're like super open about nudity and stuff like mm, that. Yes. So like it's like not a big deal. Like even if kids are around or stuff and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they had these like playing cards that had naked people on them and stuff. And I remember they had this pencil holder and it was a guy with his pants down and he was bent over and you would put the pencil in his ass. Mm, yeah. But whenever you would put the pencil in his ass, he would, I'll never forget this. Whenever you would put the pencil in his ass, he would go, oh, that's a video. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and I probably did that for an hour. And I could tell that the guy, the cashier, just hated me because I was the American over there just shoving. Ah, oh, that's a video. <laughs> yeah, nice. No, I can do a mean tally. So I, I can do a pretty good uh, American accent. I was a very good tally the other day. I thought it was tally. My wife couldn't tell us apart. I thought it was tally reading it. My favorite is Mexican. I'm very good. I do a very good Mexican. Let me hear some Mexican. Well, I, I've got, I did say this joke the other day, so apologies to those who listen. But, Ken, the, me uh, the Mexican word of the day is chicken wing. And I'd like to use it in a sentence for you. My mama wants to join the lottery, so chicken with the money. Chicken wing. Yeah. If I close my <laughs> eyes, I would be like, that's a Mexican dude. Yeah. That's a guy that half the people in my state have a problem with. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Then I can do a mean tally. I, I, you need to say a sentence if I can try and copy you. Let me think. Give me just a minute. I got to close my eyes. He's got to get in the zone. <laughs> See, I used to work at a gas station and I, I'm trying to think of what, uh, and it was a gas station in the middle of the like farmland and the old farmers would sit in there and talk about their crops and stuff. So I'm trying to think of something that I would hear them say, okay, okay. I got one. Crops ain't coming in worth a shit this year, Bill. Crops ain't coming, worth, coming in worth a shit this year, Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're getting there. You're getting there. Bill. <laughs> Bill. Love it. <laughs> and then you got to follow that up with something like, and what's that colored feller doing in here? Oh. Uh, <laughs> what's that colored feller doing in here? <laughs> Bo's already walking the line with that. <laughs> Some of them were good people, but, you know. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. I'm talking about those old farmers that were in the gas station. Yeah, let's hate on them. Uh, most of them are dead now. Oh, shit. Why? Old age. I mean, that, that was probably 2000, 2003, and they were old then. They're probably reaching for their rifle in their tractor because they saw a raccoon or something, so they were going to shoot it and accidentally hit the trigger and blasted their face off instead. Yeah, that or got wrapped around a PTO of a tractor and fucking got just thrashed against the ground uh, yeah that happens sometimes yo call again a ragdolled yeah oh <laughs> yeah i used to i used to work at a farm when i was a kid and uh many of animal go through those bailers eh it's pretty sad yeah yeah that's why uh, when people talk about converting to veganism right they're gonna leave a vegan lifestyle so they don't hurt animals have you ever seen how many rabbits get chewed up in these in the fields that people are using in their salads like I would argue that 10 times the amount of animals get killed than a cow does for a steak. They need to start yeah. putting warnings on salads may contain traces of rabbit. <laughs> yeah, rabbit, and squirrel, snakes. Oh, yeah. Just anything small enough to not see. 
baby deer stray cats i need deer not bambi yeah they'll nest down yeah they'll get hit by bush hogs all the time yeah yeah because i was a kid and I, my job was to like bale the hay and i'd always be like oh there's something wet in this one you know what i mean like oh that <laughs> yeah, was a liver yeah what? from a deer's mother yeah <laughs> <laughs> None of you guys are vegan, are you? Yes, I am. A, I am. A, no, I oh, fuck no. I didn't know. I feel like I thought Tally was vegan for some reason. It's a good assumption, but no. I just wear really flamboyant clothing. Okay, okay. <laughs> like all vegans. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> not the socialism. The socialism that yeah. Tally is a part of is not the... Not real key indicator it's her flamboyant clothing that she's stolen from the vegans we made it together with hemp (laughs) what are you uh what are you drinking today there tally corona extra not virus it did become legal just last year in my hometown to buy alcohol so that's how far behind we are yeah, so there's a uh, really this kind of ties into the episode, so I'll just I'll just start here because uh, basically you guys are in a prohibition for this. What do you guys know about like prohibition in the states from the 20s? It only just stopped for Kent last week. <laughs> That's what I just learned. Yeah, because of Michael Malloy that episode, I know quite a bit about it. You do, yeah, yeah, yeah. blind tigers, all that stuff. Yeah, it was a fucking riot. Did you did you guys learn a lot about this in school? Like, do you guys learn about prohibition in? It's high covered. School? It's covered. Yeah, yeah, we're still going through it here. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you did, Michael. So you would know way more than I would. I'm just going to give you kind of a brief, like, how the fuck did this happen, right? So, uh, do you guys know why it happened? Why they even put in uh, prohibition in the states? Um, I think religion had a lot to do with it. Huge part how, of it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the devil's drink. I think that they argued that it. <laughs> Hmm. was a huge reason for unemployment and you know spousal abuse and for sure and all that stuff and then the bible gets brought into it and the second the bible the bible gets brought into anything it starts. were there too many people having too much fun like was that like was that that's normal? part of it because yeah honestly in the 18th or in the 19th century people fucking drank okay this is what i learned they drank we think we drink a lot now they drank a lot back then okay yeah so before any of this religion part came in uh the british ended all participation to the american rum running business like from britain to america just like on moral stance because of slavery so the states were like and then uh, also the u.s started taxing rum and molasses and shit like a lot so they didn't really have too much liquor coming in so they had to think of a good way to do it and the corn belt, which is like Midwest, the States, whatever, they had a bunch of corn and they couldn't ship it long distances anymore. So they figured to solve the problem, they couldn't ship it long distance just because there's no refrigeration and shit like that. So to solve the problem, what they did was they kind of like made all the corn into whiskey, mm-hmm. all the stuff that was going to go bad anyway. Yeah. So they made it to whiskey, right? Yeah. Which is smart idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that being said, uh, okay. Okay. Just to say it was it was uh, way more profitable for them to do that. That's what, what I wrote here. But in the, by the 1820s, uh, there was so much corn whiskey, it was sold at 25 cents a gallon. And it was cheaper than beer, wine, coffee, tea, or milk. Wow. In the States. Okay. Fuck. Wow. What a beautiful time to be alive. Yeah. Oh, what <laughs> yeah, a wonderful time. <laughs> so crazy. So they drank. And they drank a lot. By 1830, alcohol consumption reached its peak in the United States at seven gallons of ethanol alcohol per year per capita. So that's pure alcohol. Like, let me put this into terms that you guys can understand. Okay. My family. That's that good shit. <laughs> yeah. The fucking straight shit. Okay. You could put this in a, in a Boeing 747 and drive to Hawaii. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that equates to 1.7 bottles of 80 proof whiskey per person per week in America. Oh, shit. So that's like a seven, like a 26er, like a two, a 750 milliliter bottle, like a normal whiskey bottle, yep. 1.7 per person. Okay. That's 90 bottles per person per year. We didn't get <laughs> shit done that year. Wait, 80 proof. It, Christy, isn't in Australia only 40 proof? 40%. 80 proof is like. That's like moonshine. Yeah, that's like Everclear. 
We we get eighty. We get eighty here. Eighty is our highest. Is the highest you can go with in Canada. I'm gonna go ahead and bet that there's no cap <laughs> in Minnesota. We have to use it to keep stay alive. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way people <laughs> yeah. continue moving. It's lubricant for Minnesotans. It's yeah. the beer keeping us alive, people. And doesn't it stay cold there? Oh yeah. Yeah, it keeps you warm. I love the snow. This is three times the amount of drinking that happens in America today, just so everyone's fully aware. Okay. Wow. Nowhere in the world currently drinks as much as Americans did then. The country with the heaviest drinkers in the world is, take a guess. What do you guys think it is? Australia. Nope. <laughs> Germany. Mexico. Mexico's a good guess, but no. France. Spain. It's the Belarusians. The Bel- Belarus. <sighs> Those are my next guess. <laughs> no, Czechoslovakia they... was my next guess. <laughs> <laughs> Croatia. <laughs> Croatia would be a good one too. Uh, the Belarusians drink 4.62 gallons of uh, ethanol alcohol per year per capita. That's 66% of what they're doing. So that's two thirds of what Americans did back then. They fucking drank. I just wow. want to hammer that down. Okay. So in response to this rampant alcoholism all over the United States, uh, the temperance movements were starting to form. Uh, oh. And they had these temperance societies and they were just like filled with these fucking christians trying to like force their goddamn puritanical beliefs down people's throats uh women and this isn't just me this is a bunch of articles saying this so i'm not trying to be sexist but women were a big part of these fucking temperance societies uh because they kept saying that it was ruining the family they're getting beat well yeah i bet you that's part (laughs) of it too abused and yeah for sure that's what they're saying they're getting abused and fucking for sure Ah. Their husbands were getting paid and just going straight to the pub and drinking all the money that was supposed to be for their 47 children. So <laughs> what a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one quarter is getting you fucked up for that night. Yeah. That's fantastic. And then the guys from Assassin Creed, Assassin's Creed came in. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they weren't all like Christian. It wasn't all because of Christianity and stuff, but like that was a big part of it. They're also like, look at how sick this fucking guy is. He can't even live past 40. Like they were actually putting out some good information as well. Wasn't there also like a drought? Not that I know of, but there could be. Like I said, I'm going to give you a brief history. There might have been a drought. There's other things that that actually add to it too a little bit later on. I make shit up. So that there was a drought. (laughs) And then there was the drought. Yeah, the drought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, the drought of 1833. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't want to blame all religion on this one because yes, religion's a part of it, but imagine everyone being fucking hammered 24-7. Like like yeah. Ted said, nothing would be getting done. It would be fucking welcome crazy. to my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine the state of their livers? Oh sounds like the week of Christmas for us. Yeah, that's Christmas week. Um yeah, so throughout the 1800s, the rest of the 1800s, these temperance societies started to gain like a lot of political strength and social strength. Like they were, the, the drinking went down from the 1830s, but it was still fucking high. It's because of these temperance societies. And they started forming these things called anti saloon leagues, which I find fucking <laughs> hilarious. Uh, yeah. And these guys would like go bust in saloons and like break down the saloon and be like, this is ungodly. I would not be friends with those people. Oh, fuck those guys for sure. <laughs> fuck those assholes. Yeah. So anyway, so they, they were making political moves and no, people were backing them. It was, it was really weird. And then, yeah, so this all was getting steam, but then World War I started. And then president in 1917, President Woodrow Wilson actually instituted a wartime prohibition in order to save grain for food. So mm-hmm. no more alcohol was being made in the states for the last year or so of world war one uh and then after the war temperance societies slowly morphed into prohibition societies and started to lobby the government they, they kept being like look how awesome this is nobody's having stuff done right <laughs> but this is great uh and then eventually the, the 18th amendment of the constitution was written up and passed which banned the manufacturing transport and sale of alcohol in the u.s and nascar was born in the same time, that's awesome. They're like, they're not drunk. They can drive in circles now. This is great. NASCAR really, really was born out of prohibition. Well, that's great. I didn't know that. <clears throat> they were, and this is all true. And this, it was born in my kind of in the Appalachian belt here. But um, moonshiners who were making moonshine during the prohibition, 
because it was illegal. It was like making meth then, you know, yeah. even though it was just booze. Um, they started souping up their vehicles to get moon to get away from the cops whenever the cops started chasing them, delivering moonshine. Dukes of hazard. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. But only they wouldn't put a big, you know, numbers on the side to make it a and a big Confederate flag on and the a roof. giant <laughs> Confederate flag on the roof. Yeah, <laughs> they would try to keep them as like low key as possible, so it might look like a Toyota Corolla, but it's got like a 454 big block in it, you know, with drag tires. So yes. I do remember seeing this. Yes, that's true. And then they had these fucking guys that could drive really fast, and they went, "Let's race." I remember that. Yeah, remember they started racing story. each other on the back roads, and then the NASCAR was born. That's how NASCAR was born. That's interesting, Sorry, right? That's yeah. So, yeah, when they passed the law, uh, that happened, but they didn't have any way to enforce the law, so they passed the Volstead Act, which then in uh, so from January seventeenth, nineteen twenty, till uh, December fifth, nineteen thirty three, owning, manufacturing, and consuming alcohol was illegal in the United States. Uh, during this fourteen years, ish, NASCAR was born. Apparently, I forgot about that. Uh, underground speakeasies started flourishing. Uh, spikes in organized crime profits with what's a speakeasy underground drinking place yeah an illegal establishment establishment it's also called a blind tiger she's gonna ask why they called speakeasies why are they called speakeasies and then second to that why are they called blind tigers just a code name so cops wouldn't know you're going to get hammered it doesn't i don't it could have been anything could have been like richard's beard Mm. let's go to richard's beard (laughs) eagle eye (laughs) Well, if you think about the the phrase speakeasy, it's just like, hey, keep it fucking on the DL. Speakeasy. Like know. mom is the word. I'd be far more concerned if someone said, hey, I'm going to go and do something with a blind tiger. I've like, yeah. I would be far more concerned. Always dangerous. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. Blind, blind tiger would be easy to taunt, though. Like you could get away with it. Yeah. Get away from it. <laughs> if I was a police officer and someone walked past me and went, hey, El Kento, I'm going to go and uh, hustle a blind tiger. I would be, as a police officer, I'd be like, I need to be involved in that because that sounds dangerous and potentially illegal. So I feel that that didn't work in its favor. We would be very different cops, me and you. (laughs) (laughs) I would be like, you go do that. I'm going to go to the speakeasy. (laughs) Well, we could never be a criminal. She's too honest. Yeah, you just don't talk to them. You just walk right by them and not say a word. Yeah, I guess that's honest. You just don't say anything. <laughs> yeah, so uh, during the 14 years, like I said there, uh, crime was flourishing. Uh, government wasn't getting as much taxes from their booze as they were. <laughs> no progress in actually stopping the alcohol. It just went underground. So they repealed it. It, it was considered one of the worst, biggest failures in American policy ever. <laughs> You know, Mm -hmm. Um, but during those 14 years, speakeasies, gangsters and just the average working man were still finding ways to get their alcohol. So let's go to Canada now. All right. The Yukon. Does everyone know where the Yukon is? Canada. No. Yukon is our one of our northern territories. It's like one of the far north places that are like basically winter almost all year round. Yeah, it's it's far north in Canada. Uh, Right beside um, Alaska. Oh, so West. We're going to talk about some brothers now. So brothers Louis and Otto Lincoln immigrated to Canada from Denmark in the early 1930s. Mm -hmm. I I see somewhere that they said the 20s. Who gives a fuck? They were there. Okay. Uh, (laughs) People are going to say something like it was the 20s actually like, okay, no, okay, whatever. What were their names? Louis and Otto Lincoln. Okay. Not Lincoln like Abraham Lincoln. They're spelt like L I N. K-E-N. Lincoln. Okay, so you're telling us there's no relation. No relation, Tabor. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was my next question. Maybe they wore top hats. Okay. Really ugly. <laughs> Did they have like square beards? <laughs> yeah. Paul is fuck. Really honest. <laughs> yeah. Very honest. It's really funny guy, apparently. Lincoln was funny, apparently. That's a true story. Um all right, so the Yukon got big uh, around 20, 30 years before they actually went to the Yukon from the gold rush it was in the early 1900s uh during the gold rush population of dawson city grew from a little over 500 people to over 30,000 people in just the two short years the the actual gold rush was on even decades after the gold rush 
a lot of immigrants and even North Americans, but lots of immigrants still flooded Dawson City and Alaska uh, in search of their next big discovery, big gold discovery. And that's exactly why the Lincoln brothers went up there. They thought they were going to get rich on gold. Uh, they wanted to be placer miners and live the rest of their days just drunk off their fucking cheap whiskey and have gold in their pockets so they could just do nothing for the rest of their life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah, it's it's a wicked dream, right? Don't we all wish we could yeah. just go somewhere and get strike rich? I think that's the go. I'm yeah. pretty sure they call that the American dream. What are you doing in Canada? <laughs> they went in Canada to get the American dream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to go to Yukon. <laughs> hey, at least they didn't go to Jupiter. Hey, man, then they'd be stupider, you know? Wow. Oh, I did it. That was Classic. so good. Thanks, Richard. You're awesome. That was so good. Mm. Did you guys work on that before we got here? All right, but um, fucking chooch on that one. Right. <laughs> chooch. <laughs> I don't know what kind of drums you're using, but a uh, fucking chooch. <laughs> that's a, that's a Canadian drum. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just hitting a beaver and that's the sound the beaver makes Choo! <laughs> yeah so they wanted to be plaster miners basically those guys are the guys that are panning on the side of the fucking river you know those assholes i was like mm-hmm. very confused by what a plaster miner was yeah in my head i was like so they're my- does plaster grow in rocks? Like I'm picturing yeah, yeah. some <laughs> plaster of Paris. Not plaster miners, <laughs> plaster or placer or whatever. Oh, Anyways. so there's no oh, tea. Oh, okay, fuck. All right. Well, yeah. stop saying it weird then and I'd be out of Sorry, I don't have an Australian. I was placer miner. Plaster. Plaster. Sorry, I did the R. Plaster miners. Placer. Hang on, placer. P P L A C E R. That's right. Placer. 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 Well, I'm in mining. Yeah. It's plaster, but I mean, it's spelled placer. Yeah, you kept saying plaster, and I was picturing like what they rub on faces to make molds for prosthetics yeah. for movies. Like mining it out of a rock. I was thinking, <laughs> I did not know that came out of ground. I, I didn't no. know that. <laughs> it is rock. It's gyp rock, right? Yes. Unfortunately, yes. these assholes did not make their money gold mining. They didn't strike it rich. So... Thank God for prohibition. They decided they were going to be rum runners or bootleggers or whatever the fuck they called themselves. They weren't making enough money mining. They were still mining, but they were just working for someone. It wasn't their deposit. So they said, let's supplement our income by bringing some rum across the border to Alaska. So Alaska, like I said, got huge at the same time. So it was a pretty big place. And all these fucking miners that were up there were still getting hammered. It was more lawless than the rest of the states. They weren't following the prohibition as much so people had saloons still it was speakeasies but like it was way more out in the open and these guys would go up there and bring the rum actually a lot of the alcohol during prohibition came from canada i just wanted to brag about that i put that in here i don't know why deal you can have it yeah yeah they would make good money so one night these lincoln brothers uh got caught in a blizzard on one of their many cross-border deliveries louis had to redirect the currently in motion uh dog team with so with one foot he put it into the ground off the edge of the sleigh and wherever the tension was for the dogs they knew to turn that way right Mm -hmm. but since it was a blizzard they didn't really see where he was doing that and he put his foot right in some like icy water i don't feel like a knife real quick Ah. for sure and it was fucking sub-zero temperatures it was very cold up there i think it was minus 25 that night plus a blizzard coming yeah Minus 25 in American is a lot still, too. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I didn't write it down. It's a shit time. A lot more than that. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. So his foot was soaked thoroughly, but they still they thought they had cops on their tail. So they didn't stop to deal with this problem at all. They just kept Ooh, posse on the chase. Yeah. So they're running with dogs. Like, think about the dog sleigh chase, which I find funny because the cops would have been on dog sleigh, too. That's the only trails they had. <laughs> Yeah, Bush, get away from them. And then his foot soaked. The two brothers are like fucking panicking because they know it's a bad news to get your foot soaked in weather like that. But they can't stop. They don't want to get arrested, right? I'm just trying to picture like Michael Bay directing this chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really dramatic music. Yeah. 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 Dogs do a burnout in the snow. Is he drunk? 
Because that'd be okay. Yeah, I'm imagining everyone was drunk back then. Remember those stats I gave you? Like, he was hammered. How uh, fast? Did you say how fast they go? So, basically, uh, they go 10 kilometers an hour, which is about, I guess, six, po- six miles an hour. Not that fast. Uh, That's pretty fast, though. Oh, for all, uh, with dogs, for sure. But, I mean, yeah. versus what we have today, it's not really that fast. But, yes, for sure. That's fast. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But they were about 60 kilometers away from Dawson City when they actually stopped to look which is, that's like a six hour ride to get there, right? And his foot was frozen. Oh, wow. They took off his sock and they don't know his, his big toe was turning black already, <gasps> right? Necrotic black. Necrotic black. Necrotic black. Yes, very necrotic <laughs> black on this one. And you can get that paint color at Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, necrotic, <laughs> <order> necrotic black. <laughs> yeah. The new oh. mascara color at Sephora this season. Available in the unethical store now. Sponsor us for a- Oh my God, that is such a good idea. Necrotic Black, if you guys did your... Anyway, anyway, it's all right. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, so really they look at it and they don't really see too much of an option. They just start, they open up some of their booze. They give each other a shot. They do a shot and then they do another. And then Otto pours another shot. Uh, rummages through his satchel and finds his newly sharp sharpened wood cutting axe oh an axe is too big an axe is too big you've had three shots don't do it before i get into the lincoln bros more on this i'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a uh cliffhanger because this is funnier uh let's cut to 1930 okay we're gonna go to a different part of canada new brunswick where a man named dick stevenson was born all right oh god all right always the adventuring (laughs) type this young man Dick, he hitchhiked his way through Canada, working cattle ranches, logging and mining camps all along the way. Then in 1956, at 26, he thumbed his way to Dawson City and found his permanent home. He was the fish warden there for a little while. Then... A fish warden? (laughs) He was, yes. He was like the the game warden. Yeah. Then he earned himself the nickname Captain Dick Stevens because he bought himself a big old boat and started giving boat tours on the Yukon River. Captain Dick? Captain Dick. This is where he got his, his aye famous aye. hat, his iconic captain's hat that he wore for the, basically the rest of his life. Uh, he did tours for many years till he retired. He was a staple of the community. Then in 1973, at 43, Captain Stevenson, with his wife Lou, bought the Lincoln cabin from Otto, the only surviving brother. Now, the couple were cleaning out the cabin after they'd purchased it uh, from the Lincoln, uh, Otto, from Otto Lincoln, and they found in the garage no. where they were, one of the things they found was an old pickle jar from the 20s. And he thought it no. was really weird. He thought it was really weird. He looked at it <laughs> and he saw the pickles rotten at the bottom. Okay, so let's go back to the old cold Yukon blizzard here, okay? Where I left you the cliffhanger. Half drunk Otto, rose his axe over his head, swung it downward and cut his brother's o- toe off with one swift oh, blow. Oh, boy. I thought you were going to say cut his head off. Yeah, cut his head off. Your foot's frozen, your toe's dead, <laughs> cut your head off. <laughs> yeah, you're dead. I, do you know what? I am, I am wildly impressed with his ability, his ability to be able to do that as precision, like the precision that would need to happen for that with yeah. that much booze under his belt. To only cut one toe off with an axe. Yeah, not the whole foot. I'm going to yeah. tell you right now, this is all legend. This is all legend, which I, I'm recalling it as legend recalls it because guaranteed it wasn't as simple as that. But that's the way they tell the story. So that's the way I'm telling it. Guaranteed he didn't even have an axe. He probably had a little knife and he probably suffered. Maybe he it. chewed it off. Yeah, maybe he popped I it chew- off with his teeth. <laughs> no, I think they're off. masters of cornhole. So he just knew to just not take his eye off the toe. That could be it too. <laughs> maybe he was just super good at cutting wood because back then they had to warm them. So they, they cut a lot of wood. So maybe he was just an expert at it. There you go. I call bullshit. Okay, but I mean, that's the story. <laughs> it could have been one of those hatchets. It might not have been a full-size axe. I like Richard's idea of having a tiny little, like, butter knife. Or oh, I like your idea of chewing it off. That's I'm going with those two. Maybe they have those little pedicure, um, like, foam separator things. <laughs> then they just like and it was bright pink and then they just fa- fancied it to his yeah auto auto was a manicurist on the in his pastime a pe- manicurist <laughs> pedicurist he's going you got some real shit calluses bro like you gotta take care of this kent, kent goes like this what do you mean these things 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's already wearing them. <laughs> oh. I saw James yeah. Franco cut his own arm off with a Swiss Army knife, and he was completely sober. So when the movie was called 127 Hours. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I call bullshit. <laughs> he didn't really do it. Bullshit. James Franco still has all these limbs. <laughs> I think I called that movie 180 hours because I can't get shit straight. I started watching The Sopranos. Oh my gosh. I started watching The Sopranos, right? And I'm talking to my husband and I'm like, just so you know, a uh, headless horse is going to end up in this show. And he's like, Tally, that's the godfather. That's the godfather. Oh. And- <laughs> But a bing! All right. My God, Tally. As if you're, you're hilarious. You come to me on my daughter's wedding day. Yes. <laughs> no. I'm guessing that's from The Godfather, because they don't say that in the Say Sopranos. that in a real thick uh, southern access, accent, Ken. What does The Godfather sound like in a backwater swamp? Yeah. yeah. The Godfather of Kentucky. <laughs> you reckon you're going to come down here on my daughter's wedding day when she's marrying me? <laughs> And... <laughs> yes which is also my wedding day and... uh but these guys must have been these guys must have been from the south because what they do with the toe what do you think they do with it they take it okay so the couple has bought the no they chop they chop the toe off the two brothers they take the severed toe yep. they throw it inside of a pickle jar filled with alcohol and they want to bring it home to commemorate this wondrous event of theirs. Why so not? They bring it back to da- uh, Dawson City, and it remained on the shelf of their garage for 50 years, many years after Louis actually died. All right. So right. now we're back in 1973. Captain Dick opens up the pickle jar, find out in the rum that it, the rotten looking pickle at the bottom is actually a mummified toe. There are other reports that it wasn't cured by alcohol, but salt. I don't give a fuck. It's cured, whatever way it was. Uh, after finding the toe, Captain Dick and his wife close it back up, leave it up there and go like, that was weird and fuck off. <laughs> they just leave it there. They go like, that's cool. No questions. Yeah, and they didn't yeah. think about it. Yeah, they didn't think about it. Well, they, I'm sure they went and asked Otto about it later on because that's how they get this story or he just made it up. I don't fucking know. Either one of the two. Um, <laughs> but after uh, they didn't think too much of it, Captain Dick didn't think too much of the toe until he yeah. was out drinking with some reporter friends at the El Dorado Hotel, which is in Dawson City. Uh, the captain told him about the mummified toe. He told him the tale. So I'm guessing at this point is when he, before that, he asked Otto about it. And when they discussed what they should be done with the toe, Dick and his friends conceived of a good idea that very night. Dick says that he and the reporters drank so much the night of the, uh, that night that the reporters forgot about the conversation in the morning when they were super hungover, but he didn't forget. Okay. A captain never forgets. Mm -hmm. That's an elephant. He had it, but yeah, it's an elephant. Same thing. Captains. Elephants are captains. Um, (laughs) All elephants what? are captains. All elephants are captains, but not all captains are elephants. That's correct. Ah, you're catching yep, I on. I like it. <laughs> you're catching on. <laughs> yeah. He went back to his cottage, his new cabin in the garage, grabbed the tow, uh, brought it back to his other house in the Yukon, Dawson City, and started a new tradition. <laughs> I did it, guys. <laughs> I did an episode about the tow. <laughs> so there's this bar in the yukon yeah the idea that the toe or the toe the idea was that the toe would be at the bottom of a drink and you could drink the drink with a toe in it acting as a slimy warm ice cube he called the he called the drink the sour toe cocktail ah a little on the nose well <laughs> that's what I, it's on the toe it's on the toe uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's on your toe. lips too it's a, it's a little on your lips i don't yeah, think it's yeah. your toe that yeah <laughs> but i thought that was on the nose too but basically in it's it's a play on words for a saying up in the uh yukon when you are survive a yukon winter that's known you're known as a sourdough okay uh. Uh, Why? Until then, I don't know. It's just the way they call it. Because they just turn really pale. A little bit full, uh, full of holes and a little bit moist. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> little, little chew to them. <laughs> yeah. Until you uh, spend the summer or the winter in a Yukon and you st- you're living up there, you're known as a Chicago or a greenhorn, and you're usually ridiculed by the four season locals. They just fucking mm-hmm. make fun of the people who never spent. I love it. I find that hilarious. A greenhorn. 
Yeah, Chicago. Chicago. So what'd you call me? Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds Chicago. offensive. I don't yeah, know why, but it that does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like if I went into Mexico and yelled Chicago, I would end up on CNN. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now if you drink the sour toe cocktail, you join the sour toe club. The only one rule is that the toe touch your lips. The original Ooh. the original cocktail. <laughs> was a beer glass filled with champagne with the toe at the bottom. And if you could drink that, you're part of the club. Isn't that fucking nasty? <laughs> like a beer glass? I want to do that. A stubby or a, like a, a pint? A pint. A pint glass. Of champagne? Of champagne with a dirty toe at the bottom. You'd be wasted. Yeah, that's like almost a whole bottle of champagne. Yeah, that was the hey. rules back then. All right. And it was funny. He did this on purpose. Uh, I don't I don't know if he did this on purpose, but he must have because like think about it. Champagne's like a fancy drink, a toe is fucking disgusting, and a beer mug's like Yeah, but if you really think about it, if you really think about it, is it really? Is what really? The toe really that gross at this point. I'd do it. It's been pickled for, for 60 years. It's been pickled for so long. It, I don't I don't I don't think I would have any trouble doing that. Okay, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll tell you tell me if it's gross when I'm done this. Okay. Right now, your opinion is that it's not gross. <laughs> okay. No, my <laughs> opinion is it's gross, but because you described it as slimy, that was when I got off. That was no, hang on. Oh, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you can't finger it, Bo. You can't finger it. <laughs> That's when I jumped off the train of being able to have it when you said slimy. Jump off the train. Oh. Get off the train. <laughs> Say the word slimy again, Richard. You know, <laughs> slimy. You know, what this, you know what kept making me think of, though, was like, this is like 100 years after the worst drinking part in America. Like, can you imagine the crazy shit they were doing in 1830? Like, they thought this was a good idea. Like, imagine what the, in 1830, they're like, just drink it off a of fucking, it threw out of his skull. Like, they're probably doing shit like that. Like, they just cut his head off. Yeah. Like They probably yeah. had to snort it off the bar if they spilled any. Imagine the shit this toe has seen. Like, yeah, yeah. Imagine the breath it has smelt. If that toe could mm. talk. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Mm. So, anyways, he convinced uh, Captain Dick, convinced the owner of the El Dorado Hotel to let him sh- uh, serve the uh, sour toe to customers. And mm. soon after, the sour toe was mega popular for whatever reason. All right. Tourists started asking for it by name, uh, maybe as a refreshment. I'm thinking it's more of like, so when you went back to like civilization, you were like, look what I did up in savage country. I drank out of a toe. I think it was more like a I'm tough mm. fucking kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, Louis Lincoln's original toe is not the current toe at the for the sour toe cocktail. <laughs> I knew that. Where did they get another one? Uh, I'll, I'll, I got to come Louis toe was actually swallowed by a very drunk miner in 1980. Oh. After falling oh. backwards in his chair after doing his eighth <laughs> sour toe in a row. <laughs> okay, that is so much worse than drinking a tuner. Uh, oh, so yeah. much worse. <laughs> That's like a big that that dude. I bet he could oh. deep throat a cucumber because <laughs> yeah. a toe is like a big of all, all your append like all your many appendages. The toe is the fattest one. Oh, yeah. for sure. For, for sure. him to be able to just accidentally swallow a chode like that. <laughs> <laughs> but if it was on his eight, it was on his eighth one. And if it was eight things of champ, eight pint glasses of champagne, by that stage, he's probably like. Throat gets real relaxed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Loosen up the old throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At that point, you're just like one of those pelicans. That- <laughs> 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 that was the best rendition I have ever seen in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. How they just, yeah, they, yeah. just, they just up and then... open their jaw and just kind of shake it in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone that's <laughs> listening right now, you need to join Patreon just to watch, watch Kent do that. Watch Kent do that. That was really, really good. I thought I was watching David Attenborough then. Like that yeah. was a hundred percent. Watch the watch the majestic Southern man drink back a full hot dog. <laughs> 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 but they just open up it just goes falls straight into your stomach yeah. yep. ew oh, also i'm concerned how big your toes are ken if you i've got fat toes ken's got amazing feet 
I've got, I do have pretty good feet for a guy. <laughs> for some feet that's been through what mine have been through. Yeah. I'm doing all right. <laughs> doing all right. Hang on. How tall are you, Ken? I uh, right at six foot, which means 5'11. <laughs> like they look like potatoes. <laughs> what? Yeah. You need to see your local GP. Potatoes. <laughs> uh, are... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so oh. funny. Oh god, there's some good puns coming up soon. Yes. So I love you guys. All right. <laughs> uh they didn't have a toe. All right. They didn't have a fucking toe. The, they were pissed. The guy did not puke tally, he just swallowed it. Of course he'd be fucking pissed. Yeah, no toe, no tradition. It's only been around for like seven years. Right? I mean, all they gotta do is wait a little bit. A did lesser that- man would have given up, is what I say, but not yeah. Captain Dick Stevenson. You know what Captain Dick Stevenson did? In a last ditch to uh, ditch effort to keep the tradition alive, Stevenson substituted the toe with a pickled bear testicle. <gasps> oh! Oh! oh, that is not as bad as a toe. Less gross than a toe. Yeah. Also, the penis bone from the same bear was the swizzle stick. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, they got their bone. Their ding ding. Their fucking cocks have bones in them. <laughs> penis. Wait, bears have bones in their penises. Yeah. Much like yeah. Sasquatch. Excuse me, I need to Google this. Look up a raccoon bone. Please do. That's like a common toothpick in the South. <laughs> Are you joking? No, look it up. I'm being no. serious. Raccoon bone. Is that what? Raccoons have bones in their penis. Raccoon as well? dick. Don't type dick. Penis. Raccoon dick is probably going to bring up a diff. If you keep it scientific. <laughs> Rac- raccoon penis toothpick. Yeah, it's a common toothpick. They whittle them down penis. and use them as toothpicks. Oh. Fantastic. Uh, he renamed the drink the Better Bitter Bear Ball Highball, but it had the same rules. Better Bear the Ball. The Better highball. Bitter Bear Ball Highball. Bear Ball Highball. <laughs> better Bitter Bear Ball ho- We can't say it. Exactly. It's, it's hard. <laughs> better Bitter Bear Ball ba- Highball. Better Bitter Bear. Fuck that thing. But uh, that's what he called Take it. Take out one of the balls. That's all you have to do. And it makes it much better. Yeah. What is it again? <laughs> The better bitter bear ball high ball. So just take out the first ball and just call it a high ball, which makes it funny because it's a pun. Yeah, but it's a bear ball. Yeah, it's but a ball from a bear. A bear, a a bear high ball. Bear ball high ball. No, oh, because then the pun goes away. I know. <laughs> Still less gross than the toe. Holy shit! That is a thick bone. What up, bears? What up? Bears? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look up the black bear one. Ooh, okay. black bears have the biggest bones. That's what I've heard. Black, of course they do. Smallest Arctic bears or polar bears. Polar bears, yeah. Holy <laughs> fuck. That is so thick. Yeah, I'm guessing it was a grizzly bear because they're where they live or it could have been a polar bear, but I'm not sure. I, I tried to look it up which bear bo- ball it was. How big is a bear testicle? Oh, it's fucking huge. It's gross. If their but if their penis bone is anything to go by, those fucking things are gonna be massive. Yeah. Well, just watch a bear walk find a video of a bear walking away. <laughs> watch this, <Disney>, man. <laughs> bear penis. Roughly three inches across and 1.8 ounces in weight. A bear oh wow. Bear. I'm gonna watch the revenant wow. after this. Yeah. So when the news got out that the toe was missing and the toe was actually swallowed. There were a lot of fucking disappointed travelers, okay? And it wasn't long before more toes were donated to the drink. Wow. Donated, eh? Yeah. I have to mention this toe, this toe specifically, because it was mentioned in every article I read. Uh, one of the toes was a nasty little one with an inoperable corn. So, Okay, that's the grossest thing of this whole story. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. That I'm grossed out now. Nice tie back because you know you mentioned cor- corn in I know. the very first part of this. Well done, corn whiskey, corn toe shot. Yep, love it. Inoperable corn. So imagine that one's just sticking out like a fucking yeah. A little old lady, little old lady from Saskatchewan donated that one. I very couldn't. Nice I couldn't do the drink now. Is that like? <laughs> is that like when it all sticks out the side of your foot and shit? Yeah, it's like a, a hard growth of skin. Yeah, it's like a big warty looking piece of callus. Looks like a wart. Yeah, that is gross. Yeah, it's nasty. It's uh, gross. Absolutely, probably shouldn't drink that. 
Stevenson also got a bunch uh, donated to him from a local doctor, which I find hilarious too. Uh, just asking the doctor, you got any toes, bud? Like he just gave him some toes. <laughs> so people, random. Is everyone just losing their toe? Their toes yeah, what is in the Yukon? Well, from cadavers. Oh, it's winter. Oh. oh <laughs> I was like, they probably all got frostbite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people die though. Like I, it's from cadavers. Do you mind if we cut off your gr- your grandpa's toe? <laughs> you know, you're going to bury him anyway, so can we just have yeah. his foot? Um, the bit that I've just realised is the pickled and gross toe would still have the toenail, and I reckon that's the part that I have a problem with, is the yellow, calcified, gross fucking hangnail that's on a toe that is now black and necrotic that is the part that I have a problem with. I reckon the toenail. Take the toenail out, I'll probably be okay. <sighs> Kids like that. Oh, God. That, that, <laughs> that was such a good noise. Just. <sighs> yeah. It's still the corn. I can't do the corn. <laughs> you could just think about the corn. Eh? Usually corn's delicious. Anyways. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> corn on the cob. Corn on the cob's great. Corn on the toe is not great at all. No. Um, yeah, a miner lost his leg mining or whatever, uh, and he donated all five of his toes. And this nice. prompted the beginning of the Soggy Foot Club. Now, much like the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. It's getting out of control. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to referee this shit because this yeah. is getting out of control. At what point do the lo- local authorities step in? Step in. <laughs> this one, they plop all five toes in, and then you take the drink. Then you become this part of the Soggy Foot Club. Isn't that fun? Oh, no. As of 2019, they have so many toes donated. They have like 10 in rotation. Where are they keeping them? In the freezer? Yeah. They're all preserved. They're all preserved and kept in pockets and shit. I'm not even joking. You guys not have a like a, a codes and health department in Canada? Oh, yeah. The health department. I'll get it to the health department. Part of it soon. <laughs> they definitely uh, come by. They, they're cool with it. Oh, my God. Oh. The Sour Toe Saloon is always up for quote unquote tonations, as they call it. Yes. <laughs> oh god puns are so arousing you can mail it to them or you can just bring them a toe they don't care they're happy to take it anyway you want to do it no questions asked no questions i'm asked. hitting up the mafia see you guys later <laughs> uh, now the rules are a little bit different now than they were back then all right some had to be changed for one reason was this an 80 year old lady came in to do the the shot or the drink and she told Stevenson that she didn't mind the toe, but the beer glass full of champagne was disgusting. So she was like, can I do something else? And then Stevenson decided, you know what? I'll just change it to whatever drink you want. She wanted to do it in like Alka-Seltzer water. <laughs> can I please have it in my rosé? <laughs> Get it in a glass of warm milk. <laughs> Please have it in a Bailey's with some orange juice, please. Oh, oh, gross. Yeah, the drink now, though, has to be 40 proof alcohol due to health risks, at least 40 proof alcohol. Yeah. Right. And I break health risks uh, because that was what the anyway. So Adam, nothing about the decomposing toe or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Adam Girl. Priorities. He is the general manager of the downtown hotel. He reassured USA Today that the cocktail meets all sanitary standards. How? Uh, he went as far as getting the chief medical officer of the Yukon to give uh, it a look and, quote, give it a clean bill of health. <laughs> now you're going to say, get, take a bite out of it. <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. Someone's, someone has. Oh! Chuck this toe on the Bobby. <laughs> The chief medical officer said, he went there and he said this. He said, as long as we keep the toes mummified, which we do by keeping them in salt and then preserving them in 40% alcohol, that keeps everything legal. So they're cool with it as long as it's salted and alcoholized. Wow. That's the way I deal with most of my food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then deep fried. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, girl also says... And this is where I think it starts to get gross. And this is why I would not want to do the shot personally. Girl says that they can only use the toes for about five years before they start to degrade and need to be retired. So little chunks, flakes of toes start falling off of it. 
Mm. And I don't know what year, how many years old is that toe? I don't know. I don't trust the, these people to do a proper job with that. It's like going to uh, the county fair. I don't trust the 16 year old kid running the zipper. I'm not jumping on that thing. Are you kidding me? You know what this makes um, me think of? Have any of y'all ever been to a beach? No, no I've never. What are they like? No. <laughs> have, you, have you never? I thought you were going to go, you know what this reminds me of? There's a guy who bought a, a storage container and found a leg in a fucking, I thought you were going to like, <laughs> burst the whole thing. I was like, that asshole. <laughs> Anyways. So at every gift shop on every beach that I've ever been to, and I've been to a lot of them, you can buy uh, dead baby sharks in a glass. Yes. That's embalmed in a glass. They sell them in gift shops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be starting so many riots. Oh, I've got, I've probably got one upstairs somewhere, but they're really cool when you first get them. And after like four or five years, just like what Richard just said, they start like flaking off and falling to pieces. And then you just got like a shark slushy soup, a shark soup. Yeah, it's a soup. Yeah, it stops being cool. So I can actually absolutely picture what he's talking about here with this. Come, coming from coming from someone who lives on an island and has been to many a beach in many a places in this country, not once have I seen a baby shark in a pickled jar and Christy is shaking her head in agreement. In Australia, we don't look at things and go, I reckon I can pickle that and put it in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> America. <Ow. laughs> Them assholes better be finding them beached and already dead. That's I would all say I that say. it's probably not legal anymore. That was whenever I was a young buck. So you probably yeah. can't buy them anymore. A young buck? That's the greatest. Yeah. yeah. Good. Because I'm an animal <laughs> activist. No, actually, you know what? I saw them the last time I was at the beach. You can still buy them. Never mind. I take that back. They're still there. Wow. And they're kind of cute. But until they start disintegrating. <laughs> yeah. What kind of swamp donkey backwater Hicksville? Fucking beaches are you going to with baby little shark? America. <laughs> There's one of them at least in every household in the South. One of them pickled sharks. So wow, that's so fun. And a up. pet tiger and, and a, moonshine. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. And a restraining order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the guy who, uh, this girl guy, this guy who owns it now, uh, he, who has served the drink himself, all right, he says he's never done the shot because that seems like a gross thing to do, all right? So <laughs> even the guy who serves it's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> um, Captain Dick used to personally serve the drink at both locations until 1995, until he retired. Now, here's the recipe from the rules on the website, all right? One ounce minimum of alcohol, one dehydrated toe, garnish with courage. And then how do you become a member? You come down to the sourdough saloon, number one, two, purchase a shot. Most members prefer Yukon Jack. Pledge the sour toe oath, which is this, guys. You can drink it fast. You can drink it slow. But your lips must touch this gnarly toe watch as a genuine dehydrated toe is dropped into your drink and do the shot. So that's the rules now that are on the website. There are other rules that they don't put on the website. Uh, the toe captains, as they call them, don't put on the website. Uh, you must let the toe hit your lips. Yes, but there's no biting the toe, chewing, or putting the toe in your mouth. Wow. <laughs> you have to put that in print? They had to put that rule because people were doing it for sure. Oh. Also, if you swallow the toe, you owe them. Uh, I saw on the website $2,000, but then I also saw another place $2,500. So anywhere between $2,000 to $2,500. All right. Uh, so shot? no swallowing it anymore. If you swallow that's... it, if you swallow it, they will charge you $2,000 for the toe. Oh, that's a bit rich considering they've got like a backlog of toes. Like they don't, it's not like they need another one. You sound like a toe swallow apologist. Are you? Do you want to swallow the toe? Is that what's going on? <laughs> Can we all agree, though, that with a name like Captain Dick, there could be worse things in the glass? Oh, exactly. For I've sure. seen dicks that look like thumbs. Just saying. Since Captain Dick's retirement, the bar has been keeping up the tradition. These new toe captains make you kiss the toe before you drop it in the drink now. So they'll put the toe up to your face and go like, kiss it. Then they drop it in. Uh, oh. and I've seen this. I've seen this in many tweets. 
Uh, here's one, a couple tweets that I read about it. Lindsay Wilson, a Sour Toe Club member, said that kissing the toe was part traumatizing. It was so gross. The texture of it was really disgusting, but I don't remember a taste. The feel of it was really, really gross. It was like a greasy raisin. Oh, Oh, oh. Uh, all right, I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> a greasy raisin. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That was the best description I saw out of all the tweets I read. Uh. Captain Stevenson did an interview for the CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, in 2017 from his White Horse retirement home about the sour toe. His room was decorated with memorabilia from his days slinging sour toes in Dawson City. He even kept his old leather bound registry of the sour toe members tucked away in a briefcase. He was still wearing his captain's hat and he also had been in his little briefcase. He had uh, been carrying around two dried toes with him. Uh, the creepy little fucker brought two toes with him to retirement home. Uh, I don't know how many old people he slipped the toe in their drink. Like, I don't know. How I many... wish this guy could be on the internet today to, to answer that uh Describe what you do for a living poorly using gifts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make people suck on my toes. <laughs> that aren't even attached. Yeah. Uh, so he told the reporter he was donating his big toes to the bar when he died. And then on November 14th, 2019, he did just that. Die. When And he wasn't joking. In fact, he donated all of his 10 toes. And before his death, Stevenson commissioned an urn for himself in the shape of a toe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's a good thing ghosts don't need feet. They just That's, float around. They just float around. Yeah. You lose your feet anyway. You lose your feet anyway. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, the urns displayed over the bar at the Sour Doe, Sal- uh, Sour Doe Saloon beside a picture of Captain Dick Stevenson. Now that, he's, that he is dead, his ashes will be placed in the urn. So, in Stevenson's words, he can, quote, watch over the bar for another thousand years or so. Uh. Now, who knows if the bar will be around for another thousand years or not, but Captain Stevenson did make his mark on the world. Uh, over 100,000 uh, <laughs> Sour Toe members exist now since the 70s. Wow. And the cocktail has put Dawson City on the map forever. So that's wow. basically the story of Captain Dick Stevenson and his disgusting sour toad. Now, the ethical thing for me in this one is should they be allowed to do this at all? Like, where does it end? Right? Like, what well, makes it exciting? Can we use eyeballs? My hand was up first. Sure. Yeah. Questions. <laughs> go, go first. And then I got, I got other. We can ask so I learned something new. Yeah. I learned that the like life source of your, of the, of the human is actually in the toe and not in the soul. Oh, ah. <laughs> this, this is a Disney movie. What you're saying is we should adapt this podcast into a Disney movie. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so the biggest problem that I have with this is that you get charged $2,500 if you swallow the toe. I want to be yeah. able to have the option to provide a replacement toe um, or I don't want to have to pay for a toe that accidentally falls into my mouth. Because I, <laughs> uh, that's the biggest problem I have with this. Don't make me pay for a toe that I am consenting, informed consent. <gasps> uh, the bit that's got me is the slimy raisin. That, <laughs> and the toenail. Yep. The toenail is where I've got the toenail and the raisin bit. I, I don't like. If you're looking at it from a consent point of view, people are consenting to have the toe given. People are consenting to drink the toe. I mean, making you kiss it's probably a bit. Yeah, <laughs> but. You know, isn't that how all good nights start? <laughs> if you just swallow the toenail, do you only have to pay like five hundred dollars? Uh, oh yeah. What if point. what if you can purge? If you could puke it back on, I don't know the Chuck full extent of uh, that's that's a crazy uh, like oh puke it up before it costs us two grand. I'm sure that's happened. <laughs> I'm sure someone was like some fucking uh, frat boys that are up there in summer holidays just like puked up. Like they, I'm sure that happened, but I, I don't wonder know. if they can reuse it after that. Here it is. It's it's fermented. It's fine, right? Yeah, but yeah. wouldn't stomach acid have a problem? Like wouldn't stomach acid? Just it immediately would start digesting it, but who knows? Who knows? Anyone who's done this, please reach out and tell us how it went. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the process of taking a shot. Like, you know, you tap it on the table. It's never like, it's not a slow, it's a one, like you throw your head back, mouth open. 
I could see it being easy to at least get the entire toe in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. The more I think about it. Yeah. I'm sure people get in their mouth all the time and they go, hey, don't do that. And then they just spit it back out. Or like, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sticking out of the- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, no. Just that whole sound. Uh, <laughs> milk mustache. <laughs> oh. I honest to God thought you said milk my sack then. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> So- sorry how <laughs> <did you hear? laughs> and then when you went like this i realized you said mustache mustache yeah i made a gesture to clear that up in case yeah thank you. god <laughs> yeah so you just like milk my stash sorry keep going sorry no no it's okay if you're drinking the flakes is that like do they nickel and dime you like, yeah, yeah. Cannibalism. 30 dollars a flake <laughs> motherfucker spit the flakes oh. out like is that cannibalism is that when it gets gross you know? Yes, that's can that is called cannibalism, my dear children, and it is in fact frowned upon in most countries. I've never been super opposed to cannibalism. Okay, consensual cannibalism is cool by me too. Honestly, if you want to eat, I mean, arm, I lose my whenever arm. somebody tells a story where two guys are stranded out in the middle of nowhere, and then one of them dies, and the other resorts to eating him, I'm everybody always acts like shocked or whatever. But I'm always like, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I nah. wouldn't have. Um, and I would I would expect if I died somebody to eat me if that's what they needed to do to stay alive. I, I don't never I've never understood the like big moral dilemma with cannibalism. At five eleven, you give a good couple of meals, and I appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, I've got fucking meaty thighs. Yeah, I bag the <laughs> bags the calves. Calves are mine. I get that ass. Okay. Bags the pecs. You, you got the pecs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll just eat his face. God, would it leave anything for me? <laughs> yeah, just don't eat anything from the, from the neck up. Oh, gross. Tally gets scraps because I eat most of the carrots anyway. This is capitalism. <laughs> You're too slow. You can have the organs. You can have giblets. You can have the, the offal. You can have the uh, giblets. Oh. <laughs> Do you think they should open up a restaurant like that where someone can donate their fucking amputated legs and we can just have steaks? Yes. I think that would be awesome. Oh, cool. No, we should, because we have way too many cows here because everyone needs milk for some reason. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> I was talking about opening up a restaurant where you can eat a human. What are you talking about? I'm talking about we have plenty of cows. We don't have to do that. Yeah, but it would solve a lot of issues. Like a shit pot of chickens. We can get rid of some of them and eat some of us. Mm. You want chicken seed us? How do you reckon vegans oh, would react to that? Do you reckon they'd be they'd start like protesting against? Well, the difference is this would be consensual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What Ken said, it'd be consensual. They're saying that chickens can't consent, but a human. If I went, you know what? I'm gonna die. Take my ass cheeks, make a nice like mignon, wrap it in Meatloaf. some bacon. Meatloaf. But what if you're like riddled with disease and shit? Well, you'd have to get tested beforehand. But you think Bo's riddled with disease? I said, what if? I asked the question. <laughs> do you reckon my super gonorrhea is going to get in the way, do you? <laughs> I'm not going to make irresponsible assumptions here. I don't think you would be able to eat it medium rare. It would have to be like medium and up. But yeah. why? No blood? Because because of HIV. Yeah. I mean, I think exactly. Yeah. You got to cook the hiv out of it. <laughs> Okay, real realistically here, real real question. If there was a restaurant that served people, these are attested beforehand, the bodies are donated, so it's all consensual, it's mm-hmm. all professionally cooked. This isn't some in behind yes. an alley in, behind like a CVS. <laughs> it's like yeah. an actual restaurant where you have to make reservations. Would you eat there? Yes. I would too. I would too. Yeah, I think I have to at least once. Oh, I say this, I'm going to say this, but I don't know if my real heart of heart is in this. Yes, I'd have to eat there. What do you think they would call it? Five guys. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a carver knife, you use a cadaver knife. Yes. There ah, go. there we go. Yeah. yeah. Wait, can I eat my human with a bare penis bone, please? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, like chopsticks, two of them. <laughs> um would you guys do this shot would you i i see i'm torn because yes but after hearing about the flakes no but yes 
you know, I want to try it. I want to do it. If it was, if it was one of the newer toes, maybe because then nah. there'd be slimy raisin had me gone. I'm okay with it as long as it's not the toe with the corn. Yeah. <laughs> that's like literally my only stimulation. Stimulation. <laughs> stimulation. That's my only stimulation. <laughs> Same. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't think I could. But that's that's a texture thing. It's not a toe thing. <laughs> it's absolutely a toe thing for me. That would not leave like it. your lips, like you know how when you get like oil, like olive oil on your lips. <laughs> yeah. 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 Toe gloss. Mm. <laughs> toe gloss. <laughs> And you know what that grease is on, on a realistic stand for? You know what that is? Is it's the toast sweating. It's sweating. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Head on over to our Facebook and Instagram to join in on the conversations about all things unethical. Just search Unethical Podcast. You can also find us on Patreon, where you can get access to all of our super awesome content, uncut videos of our discussions, and early release of all the episodes. We are adding fun stuff all the time, so you should definitely come and check it out. Thanks again. We appreciate all of you. I am a flamer. Like, you should see how many dicks I suck. I put them all in my mouth.